flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. This is going to be a very simple uh, illustration, example of how the horizon always rises to eye level. No measurements, just using our God-given eyes. Right here I'm on Kamala Beach, uh, at sea level, as it were. I'm holding the camera level, I think and we should have a horizon at eye level. Now I'm going to go up there, up the road, and uh, we will see what happens to the horizon as we look from higher vantage points. As we go up the coastal road, over there. All right. So take note, we can see the surface rising to eye level from here, but it's very condensed at the moment. Let's see what happens when we go a little higher. So the beach beyond this one is where I was just before. I've come up the hill now and I'm holding the camera level and as you can see the horizon is at eye level and of course we can see a lot further. We're not looking down a curve, it's just at eye level and we can see a lot more of the sea. That uh, rock out there we could see that in the first footage and now we can see well beyond that. So when we compare these two views we get a horizon at eye level when we are looking directly ahead. We can see on the left the, a snapshot from the footage taken at the beach and the surface is very condensed. Uh, most of the picture is taken up by the first few meters in front of us up to the waves. And as we then enter the sea, um, the further we go, the more and more condensed that becomes in our vision as it rises up to the, horiz the, the horizon. It's not going to get uh, any higher than that, nor is it going to get any lower than that. Uh, but of course what's happening is we are seeing as far as we can see across this um, very rough, uh, moving, uh, turbulent surface. So there is a limit to how far we can see with our eyes or even with uh, zoom lenses and telescopes the disturbance just above the water in the atmosphere, the water itself, the waves, everything is all uh, things that are reflecting light into our eyes and of course there's only so much we can take in so the more distance we see across that surface the more and more condensed it all becomes until it just merges into white because all the colors of light mixed together make white light. So this is the vanishing point, the point, the point of convergence, the uh, mirroring line, if you like. This is all where in inside our eyes, right in the center of our eyes, where the light is coming in in a cone through convex lenses. This part in the middle is receiving the most information. So eventually. Uh, there is just a limit to how much information can be taken in or light reflected from those distant objects to get as far as our eyes or our, our telescope or zoom lens, whatever it may be. And in the second picture, we see a horizon with the surface rising up to eye level, but the surface of the water is much more expanded and we can see further, but we are still looking straight ahead. So this shows us that any geometry where we have to look down the curve is wrong at its very foundation. This is not how we see the 
world around us. We look straight ahead as a rule, or when we want to see as far as we can see, we look straight ahead. And the midway level where the surface meets the sky is the limit of our vision. It's very simple to understand once you can see it. And this is why perspective has been ignored in the mathematics to create geography for a globe with an imaginary curve. Perspective is the curve. Thank you very much.